Okay, yes, I know what you're thinking. It doesn't prove anything. Maybe NASA just slipped up and installed a crappy camera. Maybe they were only interested in gathering visual data to back up the Lola topography. Or maybe they didn't consider they had a golden opportunity to collect a data of great interest to geologists, mineralogists, and astronomers all over the world. It doesn't prove the images are fake, right? No, it doesn't. But hold on to your seats, because we are far from done yet. There's much more to come in the detail of the LRO pictures. Here goes. I'll start with the Apollo 17 site, since it's the most interesting. Here, NASA provided an annotated map of the landing site, together with a four times magnification of the flag area. The raw image of this was rather dark, as it runs across Mare Serenitatis, so the extracts needed to be brightened somewhat. We'll first look at the normal annotated image. In addition to those unusually dark walking track areas, which I discussed in a prior video, this Apollo 17 image also shows tracks from the lunar rover that you can see here and here. This image is taken at a lower altitude than before, so you can distinctly make out the tracks from the left and right wheels. The distance between the tracks is 4 pixels, which, according to the image resolution of 0.53 meters per pixel, places them about 2 meters apart. And this is perfectly consistent with the dimensions of the rover. And don't worry, I'm not going to talk about how dark the wheel tracks should be. Today I'll be sticking with simpler things. If we look over here, the note below this arrow says LRV Final Parking Spot. LRV stands for Lunar Roving Vehicle. But can you see the rover? It's just a black smudge. Almost like the shadow underneath, but without the rover on top. Here are some surface photos of the Apollo 17 rover. And here's an overhead view. As you can clearly see, the rover has many bright areas, much brighter than the moon's surface. So many parts should show up bright in the LRO images, just as parts of the LEMS descent stage show up brightly. Yet every part of this rectangular smudge is dark. What about this small rectangle to the right? Could that be it? Nope. It's only 2 pixels wide, versus 4 pixels for the wheel tracks. This one I extracted from the raw image. Not as dark, but still no bright areas. Now I know some propagandists have a special ability that enables them not to see things everyone else can. Perhaps this ability also works in reverse. But to me, it looks like a patch of burnt ground. Or maybe the rover caught fire after they left. Yeah, that could be it. Okay, back to LRO. Last time when discussing the 100km images, I noted there were dark and light vertical stripes running through many of them. This was most noticeable on Apollo 12. Well, there's another more subtle pattern as well. That is, the image is broken into squares of 8x8 eight eight pixels. For example, here's a close-up of the earlier Apollo 14 raw image showing the descent stage. Here it is with 8x8 eight eight grid lines. You can see the pattern fits neatly within the grid. Here's a nearby section to the lower left. Just as with the vertical stripes, the reason for these 8x8 squares is unclear at this stage. Now back to the 50km images. In the Apollo 17 images, it's pleasing to note that the vertical stripes are gone. But the less obvious 8x8 squares remain. Here's a few places. Inside each square, the underlining image is often either blurred, faded, or jumbled in some manner. Oh, 
Okay, nothing particularly strange about that. But when we look at the area that contains the annotated text, we notice a most amazing thing. Namely, that the jumbling effect has also been applied to the text. This effect is most noticeable on the diagonal arrow pointing at the alleged challenger descent stage. You can clearly make out a staircase effect as the 8x8 pixel squares climb along the arrow. Now here's the same section of image taken from the raw TIFF file. The jumbling effect around where the arrow is in the other picture is not present here, particularly at where the middle of the arrow would be. Since there are no giant letters on the moon, it is quite impossible that this annotated text could have had any effect on the LRO camera or on the transmission of its image back to Earth. Quite clearly, this jumbling effect was not part of the original image and the effect is being applied afterwards. Except someone made the big mistake of applying it after they put the text on. Such problems are not limited to the extracts. They can affect the raw images themselves. For example, here's a part of that earlier Apollo 14 raw image showing the descent stage and boot print trails. Look again at those 8x8 squares. If this were a raw image, then it wouldn't be possible to extract a picture any clearer than what's here, right? Well, hidden away on the L Rock site is a supposed extract of this. If we zoom in on the corresponding area, we see this. Compare that to the raw image. As you can see, the fading has gone and many parts of the image, such as boot print trails and surrounding craters, are now in better focus. Clearly, this extract wasn't derived from that TIFF file labelled as raw, but from some other source. We'll return to the new Apollo 17 pictures to look at the 4 times enlargement showing the flag and LM descent stage. On this image, we notice the vertical stripe pattern like what it was in the earlier Apollo 12 photos. Hmm. Hang on a second, there are no such stripes in the 1 times annotated image. Nor are they in the raw image. So what are they doing here? Well, it gets better. If we zoom in on the descent stage, notice the large squares? They are the original pixels that were magnified four times. But inside each pixel appears to be something else. I'll zoom in further. Inside each pixel is a 4x4 network of smaller pixels. How did they get there? Pixels can't contain finer detail because they are only a 1 by 1 square of flat colour to begin with. This is what the 4 times enlargement should look like close up. Here, each square contains nothing but a single shade of grey. There's no further image inside them, and nor could there be. So in this 4 times enlargement, someone goofed double time. First by unnecessarily adding the vertical stripes, and the second by applying the jumbling effect after doing the 4 times enlargement. There's further evidence of this on the text. The word flag is surrounded by that jumbling effect grouped into 8x8 squares. Now keep in mind that this is supposed to be a 4 times enlargement. So that jumbling effect, even if it was part of the original image, should have been enlarged into squares 32 pixels wide. Clearly, that hasn't happened. And there's more. The text on this image has been rendered with a shadow effect to make it look like it's floating above the main image. And you can see the shadow at the bottom right of each letter. 
Nothing wrong with that, of course. But what is strange is it's not always jumbled. For example, under this letter F, the pixels surrounding the F have been jumbled. The shadow is quite smooth. You can see it better down here. The pixels surrounding the word descent are jumbled, but the shadow underneath is smooth. This happens mostly on the 8x8 squares that contain shadow but no lettering. This is most likely because the shadow was in a separate Photoshop layer and that layer did not have the jumbling effect applied to it.